Welcome back to Extra Truck Channel. I'm Brian. I'm Craig. And this week we've got a doozy. We're actually really excited to drive it. This is the all new, I'm not saying facelift or modified or updated, completely new Chevy Colorado. And this one happens to be in trail boss trim. And you can know that by this bit of cheapness up here that's going, oh no, there's a bed, sorry. But I mean, like all of this is kind of the theme of this truck. It's a lot of capability and a lot of might with very cheap aspects around it, but that's okay. It's extremely capable and I can't wait to get into all that. So Craig made a good point starting out. This right here, these are the tears as if it were sad. That's what that is. It's not sad, but if it had to be sad, that's where they would come from. Up here are traditional halogen bulbs, but you still get some cool treatment. You still get the bow tie and the headlight right there. And it still says Chevrolet on the side with a little bit of carbon fiber looking housing. They haven't given up on everything. That's pretty cool. Now I want to talk about approaching a little bit. It's actually pretty darn good. So what you get with the Trail Boss is higher ride height and six inch wider track. So that's why these fender flares are here. This is actually kind of like the F-150 to F-150 Raptor. You get a wider track, that's really cool. And this thing is at a very affordable price for that type of option. If you go up to the Z71, you lose that. You gain some interior niceties and better grill and that kind of stuff, but you lose that stance. So the only one that gets the stance is Trail Boss and ZR2. That's pretty cool. That's the big news here. Now, wheel and tire. This is an, a Goodyear Wrangler. It's an all-terrain. It's a Territory AT. And look, they're being cheeky by saying all-terrain. This is really a highway tire with some like fake side siping on it. <sighs> look, we played in the mud with it all day today. It was slick, we're just being honest with you. But it was very quiet and capable on the highway and we towed with it. We towed, how, how much weight, Craig, do we think? Oh, about 4,000 pounds. About 4,000 pounds, did a really good job with that. So these tires are a good truck tire. Um, the wheels are 18s, they look awesome. They're beefy, they're cast aluminum, they're powder coated black, and they are just, look, a 17 would be nicer to tear down with, but for what this thing needs to be for most people, this is the right choice, it looks good and I like it. Fender flares, they do the job, they cover the tire, and they keep you off the tree limbs. We brushed up on trees all day today. And it covers the poke too. Covers the poke, exactly, this worked out well. All right, so how do you know you're in a trail boss? Part of it is all the black cladding, including the mirror caps right here. But you keep the classic GM chrome, kind of AutoZone looking, aftermarket looking logos here. Man. It's here, sorry, it just <laughs> drives me nuts. They all do it. Even the ZR2 uh, big boy we had last week still does it. It's just, I don't love that, but it's just a font choice really. I'm glad it still has some chrome on there going around. Now the blue color is nice. That is an option on this truck. We don't actually have Monroney on this, but I'll go ahead and get to that. We've built and priced it and it's right at $40,000 and you get a bunch for that. So, can I, hey, can I say something real quick? Sure. I like how the profile, there's no black to make it look like it's smaller or chopped or any of that. It's just oh, blue. It's just blue. It yeah, looks, you mean, I like that. Well, we're for throwing some shade, there's no Toyota black vinyl decal here over a good paint. Right. Yeah, no, I'm with you. It's just traditional and looks good. The looks in this truck are awesome. You get a lot of angles right here and here. Coming down at compound angles, doing like a little bow here. This is a really complex shape on this body panel. A lot of surfacing. A lot of surfacing. Look, CTS Cadillacs would be jealous of this fender. That's all I'm saying, in a good way. Fuel door test, which by the way, has another kink in it. Like they didn't That's slack on the design. Nailed it. Mm. Freaking GM, they know what they're doing. Does not require premium. It will run an 87 and we'll cover the engine in just a minute to talk about power, but major pass on that. Good job, GM. All right, coming around the side, it has, what's this, Craig? That's a sidestep. That's the best step in the business. Yeah. Just do that, everybody. A bumper step, yeah. Super Duty's finally figured it out. They've started a copy um, on the Ford Super Duty's been doing this on their side mount. It's good, it works out really well. And then out back, let's talk about towing. This thing is rated at, what was it, 7,700, I think is what we saw. Something like that. Right in the neighborhood, I'll post the right number on the screen. We towed today with 4,000 and it did a really, really good job. I was actually really impressed with that. Um, and I'm not talking about just power plant. Some of the chassis did really well. It was stable. Very stable, yeah. Yeah, and part of that's that wider track width. It just, it just did really good. It was not being pushed around at all by the dual axle trailer. It towed like a full size truck, mainly maybe because it's only like three inches narrower than a full size truck. <laughs> maybe, and then you can tell the suspension setup, and then we'll get into this later on. Off road was a little choppy. On road with some weight, it was just about right. You can tell the truck part was more important than the Jeep part, which is exactly how this thing should be. Under the hood, powering this beast is a 2.7 liter. I know, 2.7 inline four turbo. So this is the same motor that you can get on the 1500 Silverado. That means it's big truck duty. Something that's unique here is that the cooling system is completely independent of the engine's drive line on the front end accessories. It's not timing chain driven or belt driven. It's actually an electric pump on its own, which means even at idle, it can spin the, the cooling system as if you're at 5,000 RPM. That's really good. We have never had a cooling problem on this. We've towed with it. We've pulled heavy stuff in the heat. It's done a really good job with that. As far as powertrain goes, 
310 horsepower, 391 torque, that's a big number. The hack for this is go down to the dealer and spend 395 and they will tune this just like the ZR2 because it's the same engine. This actual motor has beefed up internals compared to the LT and WT Craig trims. Those have non-forged internals and you really can't tune those up higher than what you have. You can here. I'll also say that this thing has no problem with power. I don't know that you even need that tune. So with all that, let's hop into the interior and check out the goodies there. All right, let's check out the interior and the bed of the 23 Colorado all new. First off, let's see if it's dampened. It Look is. That. All it right. is like it should be. Every truck should be. And Brian, you get plenty of tie downs in the back. Chevy is really good about that in their full size and it continues in the midsize. There's no bed lighting in this, but this is not the top trim. Again, this is a lower base trim with the Trail Boss goodies help you off road. Like the Chevy Tech liner, I think is what they call it. That's a good option. I would definitely get it. You can just throw stuff in here all day long and not worry about it. You can even throw toolboxes in and it won't dent it. Oh, okay. Good yeah. to know. Yeah. Back here, Brian, though, <laughs> Chevy has tricks with their tailgates and it continues here. And I'm just going to tell you, this is the best trick they've ever done in any tailgate from any truck oh, manufacturer. Oh, better than the porch step? You know why? You know where they stole this? Hmm. Those overlanding people out there that like Land Cruisers, there's an aftermarket modification you do to a little tailgate, and they stole that idea. You turn these little levers over, you pull this up, look at this, we got some storage. Big. I actually used this for the trailer we were using earlier. It's got a little drain, you can actually put some stuff in here if you want. That's a lot of room. I mean, I wouldn't do that, but yeah, you like tow stuff, room. it's got weather stripping, it stays dry. It's nice to have one more place for storage. That's really convenient. Moving on to the rear seat, Brian, but let's check out the door pocket. You get a nice bottle holder at the bottom and you get a nice handle on top. And I want to show you something in the middle of that handle. Now check this out. See that digital camo? Yeah. We're going to talk more about that in a minute. Okay. But basically we need to see more of that, but that's the first spot you see it. Uh, before we get into the seats, let's check out the storage. There's a little handle on to the right here or next to the seat, pull it up. And you get some storage. You get your jack supplies and some other things you could put in here. Not much. Not a whole lot, but I mean, at least it does it's fold up, I guess. It's also not accessible when it's down. Right, so yeah. a little disappointing there, but it's at least you got something. Um, Brian, you do get something else back here that um, is free with this truck. Hmm. Some sort of weird squeak. Oh, the, I, oh, you mean the continuous chirping sound that wouldn't stop the whole time we drove it? I find it. Yeah, I don't know what it is. Yeah. Um, it, maybe it's something simple, and it's probably just this model specific yeah. for this actual. But we'll see. You do get the uh, sliding rear window, but it's only manual. So you're sitting mm -hmm. up front, and you want to open it. And, well, you got to stop and get out. That's and why you have kids. It's fine. So, yeah. yeah. Let's get in though and check out the room. You get in the back. I'm sitting behind Brian here. And I'm 5'9", and actually I've got some room. And you could move it up a little bit, and you'd have some more room. This is really not bad. Mm -hmm. You do not get a center armrest, but Brian, I'd rather have this. You get rear AC. The only other mid-sized truck I know that has it is the Gladiator. I think so, yeah. I don't think the Ranger even has it. No mat either. pockets back here because they don't want any backseat drivers. Oh, I like that. All right, Brian, let's get back here. Let's, I want okay. you to get back here to see if you fit, so. Well, okay. Oh, your oh, head getting yeah. in, okay. Well, That's a weird entry. Okay. Um, <laughs> not really happening. No. Now, in the old one, I could fit in a little bit better than this. So you fit better in the side-by-side? -side. <laughs> well, yeah, I do. But there's, come on, there's a roof on that thing. It's fine. Yeah, fair, it's yeah. fair. Moving on to the front, Brian. Um, before we get in, I want to mention the payload of this vehicle. The payload on this is 15. This particular unit, 1,507 pounds. That's a lot. That's a lot. You get a lot of off-road goodies and capability, and Brian kind of mentioned the suspension a little rough unless, until it's loaded, but... The trade-off is you can put a lot of stuff in this. You could put a rooftop tent and a cap and whatever a lot, and you won't be maxing out your payload. You can actually do some overlanding stuff. You get a nice bottle holder here. You can put your hydro flasks, so that's good. Um, you get your grab handle, same digital came in there. You'll notice, Brian, this, look at your door over there. Look at your door. Mm -hmm. It's all, one thing they've done really well is it's all monochromatic black. Yeah. So the, what happens, what they've done here is the black matches really well to each other. It does. They've done a Until good job matching the black. dust near it. So the, okay. the good news is um, there's no issues of it matching. So let's get in, though. Um, no sidestep. Don't need it, though. It's not too yeah, tall. Yeah, it's not too tall. Um, you can actually get in a pretty good driving position, but you, because you can, what you can do is you can move the steering wheel up and down, which mm. is really nice. Well, bring it closer. And then you... Well, that's an option. You have to get an option to telescope it, which is interesting. I don't know if I've ever seen a car that has it as an option. Um, but you but can Brian, get it. 
they do some cool things here. I want to show some of that because it's not all bad. Brian is trying to, he's being a little ridiculous with his <laughs> car, truck. It's not that bad. Let's start it up and let's see. You get some cool gauges here. Look at all this. This is the pitch and roll off-road page. You get, what is the transfer case in? What's your steering angle? That's really cool. And we used it today and it was actually quite nice. You hit this little button here to toggle the pages and you get different stuff. You get a kind of a quiet, calm screen. That's really nice. And then you also get the, this screen's really cool. I like this one a lot because you get the tack. You, it's the only screen you can get the tachometer. But Bad news is you get nothing else. You can't get fuel economy. You can't get tripometer. This is the only page, you, the only thing you get on this page. So you toggle in again to this. Now you can get trip information, trip one, trip two. That's what we got towing 10.4. That's what we've gotten the whole time we've had it. We've towed it about half the time we've had it. You can change the information that's here. So what you can do is you can come over here and you go to these pages and you can click on vehicle info and you can get engine info. And we talked, Brian talked about earlier, coolant temp. It's kind of cool, it kind of comes up, kind of scares you, like where's it gonna stop? You click on it and then you, this button right here, add to driver display, continue. And now that will just stay there and you can go to other pages That's on nice. the main screen. Like that. That's kind of cool, I do like that feature. Going back over here, I want to show off some pretty neat things. Um, want to go to the home screen, you go to the off-road pages and you go to Baja mode and you get basically a G meter, performance meter. That's kind of cool, although... It's more like sport mode than Baja mode, right? Don't really know why I need that in a truck, but... Well, I can show you later. <laughs> all right, <laughs> okay. You see all these 1.05s? Yeah. Those are targets. Uh, yeah. You go to terrain mode and normally you would get pitch and roll here. We did earlier today and now we're not. Yeah. They have an overlanding page, Brian. This is really cool and they're really, yeah. air, all these manufacturers committed to the overlanding segment. Like the compass, that's pretty cool. You get your actual waypoints. That um, neat. I that's like that. well, not, or not waypoints, but you know your actual GPS Launching, position. Latitude. Yeah, that's cool. Um, and then you get elevation here, so it's your 871 feet and your your peak and your low. Hey, what, um, what is this here though? What is that? Yeah, yeah the, the, so this is really hard. We had a lot of trouble figuring this one out. It's actually the same thing as this. So it's 871 is what it is. I don't uh, know why it needs to be displayed two different ways, that's but it's kind of cool to see it move. But I don't know. You tell us what you think. Lastly, I want to show over here, um, you just get the nice Apple CarPlay. Everything works in here. This is a base, basically, interior spec, and you get this nice screen. Um, yeah, the base, pri or a, a cheaper trim level as far as interior features, you get the big boy infotainment system that's really good. Absolutely. You don't get uh, automatic climate control here, but you know what? This works just fine. You get a knob, you yeah. get a volume knob that works. I do wish you had a tuning knob. You don't get that. Um, you also get a volume control on the back of the steering wheel, oh, and yeah. then you can change the tracks on the back of the steering wheel. Um, um, Brian, I look over here and I see where you can adjust the instrument cluster, mm -hmm. which is nice at night and it's, you know, that works. And you get trailer brake control, integrated trailer brake control, that's nice. Um, but there's no, there's no, there's no headlight thing. Yeah, there's also no traction off button either. So, Brian, a little controversial, I'm going to say, I'm going to be controversial and say that the headlight thing doesn't bother me at all because what Chevy has done here is they put it right here, no matter what screen you're in, you see that right there at the top? You just, that's you. Oh, okay. Your, your so you have, you have it's a it's always on, it's a hot key. It's always in the okay. same spot. But you but you don't like auto headlights. Kind of solves the problem. I know, and I just do, there was times I parked somewhere and I put it on the park. And it was no big deal. Okay. And cool. then when you leave, it kind of pops up. Hey, you want your headlights on? I'm like, oh okay. yeah, thanks for reminding so me. So it's, it's not like buried away It's somewhere. not, yeah, yeah it's, that's not, nice. it's not terrible. Now, to your attraction control, there should be a button down here. Right. You have a lane keep button, you have an auto off button, that's nice. Right. But to get the traction, traction control, you hit the, the truck icon, drive and park, traction control, now you can pick which one you want yeah. and do that, so. It's still there, it's just a few there. steps away, that's yeah, all. Yeah, it's a little few steps away. Lastly down here, Brian, we get our modes, we get our drive modes, we get auto, we get an auto transfer case with four high, What's two it? high, and pay attention, if you're buying a Colorado, if you get a lower spec trim, LT and WT, you do not get four low. What? A little sneaky. Chevy does it on the full sizes as well. I think that's a crime to humanity. And so be careful to that and watch for it. Um, Brian, we get more digital camo up here. That's pretty cool. But I want to talk about this slab of plastic that all matches. Um, right. It's, you know, it's like all the same melted army man. <laughs> all of it. They could have done something else. Yeah, like, just, I know okay. this is a base trim, but what, what are we doing here? We couldn't well, get the, any contrast. Uh, all right. Or we could get this digital camo like that would in look here. so cool. <sighs> or, okay, so look, Craig and I argue all the time off camera. I've been complaining about the just drabness of this particular interior. 
And what I'm saying is, is, is cheap cars are cheap inside. I sure. get it. This one, you get a bunch for the money, all these off-road abilities. But even the Ford Maverick, which is the cheapest truck on sale today, gives you like a different texture there. Just enough to break it up and make I get it, it's, yeah, I get it's a base all. trim. It, it could be a little more effort. And maybe the next, you know, the model, the mid-cycle refresh will get that. All right, we've lost our audience. Let's go drive this thing. Let's go drive it because we want to see what that engine does. Mm -hmm. All right, all right, hit it. Hold that real quick. It's in four auto. There is no sport mode, but I've got traction and stability off. We're going to brake torque it. And that's our fourth run. We do it off camera first to get the best run possible. Right. I have seen 6.25 out of this. And that, was that in two wheel drive, auto? What was that in? Auto. That was an that auto. That was auto and that was loading the torque converter. It lets you load it to 3,000 RPM, which is when the turbo starts to wake up. Yes. That's actually a really good move by GM. That's yeah. awesome. This thing rockets out of the hole. And I do like that part a lot. And when, as when I was filming you outside the truck, all the terrible noises we hear inside here sound really good outside. Okay. Because you hear a lot of whooshes and like okay. it's screaming. You're like, okay, all right. All right, I like that. Well, and you still hear the turbo stuff inside here. I love that. Yeah. Like it sounds like a tuner car in here. It's yeah. great. So props on that. Um, and I do want to say the four auto transfer kits. I know that you can get this without a low range at all, but this one, being the Trail Boss, does get low range and it gets a four auto capability, mm -hmm. which all you Land Cruiser guys can chill out. This is the best way to do it. <laughs> you can still do two wheel drive where you want to. You can yeah. scrub the tires. You have the, all of it, part time and auto. Yeah, the, the, the world's your oyster. It just yeah. works better this way. Good job, GM, for putting out something like this. Yeah. So I think that reaches the theme of this truck and that the capability is there. Mm -hmm. The tools are there. Mm -hmm. what, let's talk about ride and drive real quick. The one tool that's not there is that you don't get a branded shock of some sort. You would think you would at the Trail Boss. Like ranchos? Although like, like I guess this is kind of the ranchos. Ford has trimmer, Chevy has Trail Boss. Right. They don't have branded shocks either on Ford's trimmer. Well, the, the they, Ranger no, does. The Ranger, the Ranger does, but, the, but that trimmer is going away in the Ranger. That is so. going away because you're getting yeah. the Raptor in that. Yeah. So that's kind of a sweet spot for them. Yeah. But the Silverado. Trail Boss gets Rancho shocks. Oh, that's right. that's right. So this gets a twin tube non-branded shock and it feels like it, it rides just like a cheap twin tube shock. Well, it rides like a truck. We've yeah. talked uh, before about how Chevy does probably just truck alone the best. And you just want yeah. a typical truck straightforward truck. trucky truck. Yeah. They got Chevy, Chevy's got that. Right. Um, what they not as good at typically is a little more of the refinement part where you're sure. not doing truck things. You just need to want it to be a little more comfortable, a little more refined. It's not as good at that. Yeah, um, and, and so and that goes to the powertrain, right? So like it's yeah. extremely truck capable. It can tow well. It's fast. It, it, it's the transmission by the eight speed auto, which has been a problem in the past for GM. Well, it's a controversy with eight speeds. No problems with our experience in this. We've had zero hiccups. Uh, with the previous color we had, we did have a little bit of a hiccup, even yeah. though it was a, a new truck. Yeah. This one, we've put this thing through the ringer. No problem. None at all. So, and again, like we said, top tier infotainment system. What you don't get is like the retrain the valve train uh, refinement. You don't get that kind of stuff. Yes. So yeah. you hear the racket of that. Mm -hmm. The roof, we were on the phone car earlier, I could hear every raindrop in the roof when you were driving this. Yeah. Thing. Just little things like that are weird. But, speaking of noise inside the cabin, road noise wise, it's really Excellent. quiet. Really quiet. Like you're on the highway just going like, going 75 radio miles an hour. No biggie. It's quiet in here. It really is. That part's really nice. And look, this kind of unrefined interior, you can also just wipe it off. That's true. And like all the mud we've got in here will be easy. We're just going to wipe it off. Just going to wipe yeah, it off and that's it. So, this, I almost wish this had actually a drain mud, plug, right? Well, not drain plug, but I wish it didn't have carpet. And, uh, floors. Oh yeah, <laughs> well today especially it would almost make more sense. It would make a lot more sense. But yeah. I can forgive a lot of the, the cheaper things that are in here, but I do want to land on the theme I keep feeling in this truck, and don't take this as my overall assessment of it, but I keep feeling the cheapness of it. It's everywhere, like the lack of switches. The owner's manual is thinner than I've ever seen in an owner's manual. When you look it up and go to the online version of the manual, it's also thin. They, they saved on technical writing. And also, the Ford Collision Warning, I forgot to mention this, did break. So radar cruise control is not working all the time we've had it, mm -hmm. which is why we call it 40,000 instead of 41, because that package doesn't work. So we're calling this a 40K truck. Um, that's not a big deal. That'll get fixed. But it's a $40,000 truck. Cheap is cheap. It's there okay. The best, someone buying this doesn't care about any of that crap. Right. 40K and so in today's money is cheap. It's fine. Um, I think you're being too harsh on all that. Okay. It is Yes, there's some cheapness to it, but it's what it's. It's not. I don't think it's trying to be anything else. It's kind of an honest, no, that's fair. straightforward, that's fair. what it's supposed to be. Now, 
Um, I just don't get the feeling that they spent as much time on making it as good as it could be versus as cheap as it could be. I feel like they went out of the way to make it cheap. And it's really frustrating because it's actually a really good truck. Viewers, let us know who's right on this. I think he's being a little harsh. I think I'm being <laughs> fair. But, you know, it is what it is. We're giving your opinion. I will say, though, Brian, this is a little bit of the sweet spot in that you get the off-road capability. Yes. And you get the motor that's a little detuned, detuned from the Zero One. Barely, but, it's, though. but has all the same internals, which means you can do what? You can go to the dealership and spend $395. And you can up this thing to the same power rating of the Zero Two. Like that, no problem. Yep. You can't do that with the WT detuned yeah, version okay. because it actually has cheaper Speaking internals. Speaking of cheapness, they made that one actually cheaper than the internals of this one. Well, no one's going to tune those. There's just going to be an auto parts no, delivery truck. That's fair. That's so. fair. Um, all that being said, I know I'm ranking the cheapness. I want to commend it on its ability. The, the track width that you get with the Trail Boss, you don't get unless you go up to a Raptor with Ford, yeah. which is $53,000. Yeah. Okay, so part of the footprint that we like, you get there. The ride height, you get it with this, so you don't get another trims. Z71 won't do that. And it comes with a G80 locker. It's not selectable, but if you trick it to lock in and gauge, it's it's, it's, it works. Yeah. It's fine. So, anyways, it's capable as heck. I'll be completely honest, if it had a telescoping wheel, and didn't rattle on the receipt when we're driving around, I could deal with a lot of things in here. Fair enough. I'm, I'm being a little bit rude to it. It's a great truck and it's gonna get better from here. Viewers, we apologize for Brian's uh, old man ranting on this episode. We thank you for watching though. Stay tuned for more. Be sure to subscribe and like so we can get more Chevy reviews for you. And thanks for watching. And thanks for watching.